First, the bad news. SAP Business AI won't help you generate Cubist versions of your family's holiday photos. But it will help you understand which supplier is best to help you roll out your plant-based packaging in Southeast Asia. Or identify the training your junior project manager needs to rise up the ranks. And automate repetitive tasks while you focus on big innovations. So you can be ready for the next opportunity. Revolutionary technology. Real-world results. That's SAP Business AI. Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations, Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry Bahamas. Survivor 46 is here and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Welcome back, Ram fans. This is Rams Up, your favorite L.A. Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at LA Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co-host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders. We're just longtime fans who love talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 407 of Rams Up. All quiet on the Western Front last couple of days, although there was a big trade. The Chiefs trading franchise-tagged cornerback Legarius Sneed to the Titans. And what did the Titans give up? A 2025 third-round pick, and the team swapped seventh-round picks in this year's draft. Just goes to show you that when you're taking on a big contract, You don't really have to give up as much as you would think, but now the Titans have to go pay Snead. And we're going to talk about the implications for the Rams. Is there a franchise-tagged player they might be interested in trading for? And the answer to that is yes. And I'm also going to revisit the Rams' situation at Edge Rusher. We talked about that a month ago. Time to revisit because not much has happened in the Rams' favor as far as edge rusher, and that was an area of concern entering free agency. Hey, it's episode 407. I'm not going to talk about a player who wore number seven, and maybe we'll come back to it, but no Ram, according to my records, has worn number seven since 1952, and that's because the great quarterback Bob Waterfield wore that number, and we talked about him at the front end of episode 307. We have five guys that wore number seven before him. Ed Goddard, Ken Heineman, Joel Hitt, Henry Matos, and Kelly Moan. All with one-year careers or less with the Los Angeles Rams. Hey, you know what? I just talked about all of them, so I guess we're done with that. Before we get on to our edge rusher discussion, I wanted to talk about Charles Davis's mock draft on NFL.com. Charles is a pretty smart guy. He knows the game. He knows these players. And what I looked at is, where did the players in my eight-player pod get drafted? Remember, I had 
created an eight-player pod of players the Rams should be targeting, sitting at number 19, maybe selecting at 19, maybe moving up and grabbing if it's not too expensive, if they can find a trading partner. So let's follow Charles' draft with respect to our eight players, my eight-player pod. Now, the first one to come off the board was Rome Adunze at number five to the Chargers. So he's probably not going to be in the cards for the Rams, but there are some other options here, including Byron Thomas, the LSU wide receiver. We'll talk about him in a second. He's in this pod. And then outside this pod, maybe in a second round pod of players the Rams might be targeting, Ricky Pearsall. Keon Campbell, I don't know, man. He's going to go in between probably 20 and 40, somewhere in there. So who's next? The 11th player selected was Jared Verse, the edge rusher to the Vikings. So there goes one of my three edge rushers. And number 13, Terion Arnold to the Raiders. Now, if the Rams really love Terion Arnold, maybe they try to trade up to that spot. But right now, three players off the board, five players in my pod are left, and there's only six picks left till we get to the Rams. So the Rams are going to get one of their players for sure, so maybe they sit tight. Number 15, Quinion Mitchell comes off the board, and number 16, Byron Murphy, the defensive lineman we started talking about recently after Aaron Donald retired. And unfortunately, he ends up with the Seahawks in this scenario. So two more picks before it's the Rams' turn, and Byron Thomas, Layatu Latu, and Chop Robinson are all still on the board. Rams are going to get one of them for sure, right? Which one do you want? Do you trade up, try to snag the guy you want for sure? Number 17, the wide receiver, Byron Thomas, to the Jags. And when the Rams pick, two edge rushers still on the board, Latu and Chop Robinson, Chop Robinson is probably barely worth a 19, so the Rams would pick Latou here. Are we happy with that? I don't know. I'm not sure what order you would have these eight players in. Maybe some of you would have an offensive lineman in this mix. I took them out of my eight-player pod since we brought Dotson back and signed Jonah Jackson. That's the way I'm rolling with this. You can argue with me about that. And hey, do so on the YouTube channel. I have no problem with that. But that's how Charles Davis' draft came down with respect to my eight-player pod. Rams are going to get one of their guys. But if they wanted one of the cornerbacks or Byron Thomas, the wide receiver, or even Murphy, the defensive lineman, going to have to move up a little bit. Or you just stick to your pod. You know you're going to get one of them. You sit tight and take Latou. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom-heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperice.com. It's only a kick. A jump, a block, it's only a serve, it's only a tackle, a run, it's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Welcome back, everybody. Mark from Rams Up here. You know, we have completed our tour of Rams position groups, but one of the position groups I thought merited revisiting was the edge rushers. We talked about it in mid-February, a little bit premature probably. Not much has changed from the Rams' perspective, though. So what are the Rams going to do? We thought maybe they'd be able to latch on to one of those premier free agents 
few of those guys got tagged. Thought the Rams still might make a trade for one of them. We've hit on a bunch of edge rushers in Paul Wallia's mock drafts and a couple of mine. Getting some feedback on the YouTube channel. Some positive, some negative. A couple of guys out there on the free agent market that the Rams might be interested in and one potentially on the trading block. So a lot to figure out as far as the Rams edge rusher group. So let's revisit it. Let's talk about the Rams edge rushers one more time. And hey, maybe we'll do it again depending on what happens between now and the NFL draft. Like we do for each of these groups, let's look back and see what the Rams have done historically as far as the draft when it comes to edge rushers. And some of these guys are defensive ends, but basically pass rushers. In 2011, the Rams disregarded the medicals on Robert Quinn and drafted him 14th overall. That worked out. No edge rushers defensive ends in 2012 or 2013. In 2014, Jeff Fisher said, let's go get Michael Sam in the seventh round. He was labeled a defensive end. And in 2015, once again in the seventh round, Martin Ifedi. Looking over this, Rams have used a lot of seventh round picks on pass rushers. In 2016, no edge rushers defensive ends selected. In 2017, a seventh rounder, Ijuan Price. And in 2018, a fourth round pick on John Franklin Myers and a sixth round pick on Trevon Young. Both of them labeled defensive ends. John Franklin Myers has put together a pretty nice career. He was one the Rams let get away. 2019, once again, no edge rushers. 2020, Terrell Lewis, another case of the Rams somewhat disregarding medicals on Terrell Lewis and his knee. And there were times it looked like Lewis is going to work out, but didn't happen. In 2021, a fifth round pick, Ernest Brown, the fourth. He made occasional appearances for the Rams, but has now landed on the 49ers roster, signed in February. Also in 2021, Chris Garrett in the seventh round. And in 2022, Daniel Hardy in the seventh round. Two guys that showed a lot of promise. I think most Ram fans are pretty hopeful one of these guys was going to make an impact, but neither did. Garrett, by the way, is playing for the St. Louis Battlehawks of the UFL, while Daniel Hardy has caught on with the Bears. In 2023, three edge rushers and a defensive end, Byron Young, Nick Hampton, and Oshan Mathis, the defensive end, wouldn't consider him a pure pass rusher, Deshaun Johnson, Young appears to be a player, the real deal. Nick Hampton, O'Shawn Mathis, promising, but we're not sure of yet. I should probably include two linebackers in this group as well. In 2017, a fourth-round pick, Samson Ebucom. He's had a good career. And in 2018, a fifth-round pick, Oko Okoranko, also having a nice career with various teams, Texans and Browns. So what does this edge outside linebacker group look like for the Rams today in late March, about a month out from the NFL draft and almost two weeks into free agency? Well, very similar to how we ended up last year. Byron Young and Michael Hoyt would be the apparent starters. Looked like Hoyt might have been out the door, but they brought him back, tendered him as a restricted free agent. We also have two other draft picks from last year. Nick Hampton and O'Shawn Mathis, as well as as well as Keir Thomas going on his third year. He went undrafted out of Florida State. And we also still have Zach Van Valkenburg. He was signed to a reserves future contract. So that group can be labeled as promising and suspect at the same time. Now Byron Young, I get it, had a very good year, but are we convinced that he's going to be the year primary edge rusher? especially with Aaron Donald no longer in the mix. And Michael Hoyt, you know, if he gets exposed in the passing game, he is in trouble, not his fault. Ian and Paul have talked about this ad nauseum. Not a player you should be hating on. Just gets put in untenable positions given his skill set. If you want a guy that can defend the run and rush the passer, he's your guy. But if the opposition designs plays to expose him in coverage, you're in trouble. Now, there are three guys that were potential free agents, top-notch, 
extremely talented edge rushers that looked like they might be available. Brian Burns of the Panthers, he was franchise tagged and then traded to the Giants. Danielle Hunter went ahead and signed with the Texans. And Josh Allen was franchise tagged by the Jags. Could Josh Allen still be in play? Well, you saw what happened with the cornerback Sneed in Kansas City. He was traded after being franchise tagged. Cost them, I think it was a third round pick next year and flipping seventh round picks this year. But then there's the contract that's involved. And it would be a similar deal with Josh Allen. Josh Allen is probably going to be even more pricey. So Allen could probably be had if the Rams are willing to give up a couple of draft picks. And we're not talking first and second rounders. However, they're going to have to pay him. And are they willing to pay him? Do they have the money to pay him? And they probably would with some restructuring of their top-end talent. And there's also other guys out there like Jadavius Clowney and Hassan Reddick. He's apparently on the trading block. Clowney getting up there in years. But if you're looking for a mercenary edge rusher to kind of augment these young guys, that might be the answer. Maybe I'd be okay with their edge rushing group if you just added Kalani to the mix. Maybe still draft an edge rusher, but the main add would be Clowney. Or you trade for Reddick. The problem is, how good of a fit is he with this defense? Is he better suited to play linebacker while occasionally blitzing or a true edge rusher? And I'm not sure what the answer is there. My gut feeling is the Rams aren't going to make a move on Reddick. So that leaves either Clowney or someone like him or dive into the draft once more and hope we find the answer there. Now there's a handful of guys at the top of the draft. We've been talking a lot about them. Jared Verse, Paul Walia, and I both feel he is the best edge rusher in the draft. Then there's Layatu Latu out of UCLA. A lot of people have Dallas Turner, the Alabama edge rusher, at the top of their list. And then there's Chop Robinson out of Penn State, probably a late first round pick. And, you know, he's kind of all over the place. I've seen a mid first round. I've even seen him drop into the second round. That's not going to happen. And then there's Braylon Trice, Chris Braswell. And there's a handful of guys that Paul Wallia has been eyeballing in our mock drafts. Adiza Isaac at Penn State played opposite of Chop Robinson. Jonah Ellis out of Utah. Both of them probably second round picks. Marshawn Neeland out of Western Michigan and Austin Booker. He's out of Kansas. Gabriel Murphy out of UCLA. Braylon Trice out of Washington. Maybe you pick up one of these guys in the second, third, fourth round. But I don't think you can count on any of these guys, except for maybe one of those top three I talked about, solving the riddle for us on the edge. Maybe one of them will, but you can't count on it. Jonah Ellis, a little undersized. Neeland and Trice, both north of 270 pounds. Booker, he's long in lane 6'6", 245. Murphy really has an ideal size, 6'3", 260. Isaac, very similar, a little bit longer, 6'5", 250. I like that length for a guy that's coming in at 250 pounds. So we talked about the potential solution at safety bring back a veteran like John Johnson and use a third or fourth or fifth round pick on a safety. I kind of feel the same way about the edge rushers. Bring in a guy like Clowney and then draft a guy like Isaac or Ellis or Neeland. But I would not be opposed to the Rams moving up in the draft because they're probably going to have to if they want Verse. Probably going to have to if they want Latou. Latou might be there at 19. Not so sure. Turner who I like less than the other two, could very well be the first edge rusher off the board. And I love Chop Robinson too. Chop Robinson is the one who might slide to 19. But the Rams have needs elsewhere. I know there's a big discussion among Ram fans on the YouTube channel. Is it defensive tackle or is it edge or is it cornerback? Some people want a wide receiver. Edge rusher is a problem we have to solve. But you know, It's not going to help much if we draft a Jared first and we don't adequately address the interior. The best way to solve all the problems up front is draft a defensive tackle, bring in Clowney, use a later pick 
on an edge rusher as well. And I don't mean a seventh round pick. I'm tired of these seventh round edge rushers. That has not worked for us. And as Paul said, the talent at the defensive tackle position trails off pretty early as well. Maybe get Byron Murphy in the first round, come back and get someone like Jonah Ellis in the second or third, and meanwhile bring in someone like Clowney. That's what I'm thinking right now. And I'm probably going to change my mind three or four times, and I'm probably going to hear it take a lot of heat for my current position. I just can't make up my mind, to be quite honest with you. Hey, if we could find a way to get first and Byron Murphy and bring in Clowney, we'll be in great shape. Is that something we could do? Probably not. I suspect the Rams are working on something, either a trade or a big signing, and we'll probably hear about it right before the draft. And it's going to be either about the cornerback position, edge, or the defensive line. We'll have to see. But that's what my approach would be if I'm less need right now. See if I can get a veteran on board. Hey, I almost forgot. Let's package up a bunch of stuff and go get Josh Allen. How about that? If that happens, we don't need to draft an edge rusher at all. Josh Allen and this young group we have will be good to go. Then we can go draft Byron Murphy or Terry on Arnold and then Chris Jenkins. Just give us so much more flexibility. The problem is, do we want to pay Josh Allen? That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.